Should I wear my medal in this video or is that too much? Discussing my running, I don't know if this is going to be a long-term goal and it might be something that I do for like a week and then you never hear about it again. I am going to try it out and see if this is something that I can find joy in. I don't think I'm going to say like what my goal in my head is yet because it's a very like far-fetched goal, but before the end of 2023, I do think I have a certain type of race that I would like to run or like at least participate in, but we'll see about it because obviously like I've run for one single day so far, so it's very hard to be like, yeah, this is my new thing. It has been exactly one month since I started my running journey. I just got home from a four mile run, which is the biggest distance that I've done so far. But I'm feeling really proud of myself. I've learned better than to underestimate myself. Hello, I'm a 13.1 mile finisher. Hi, I'm Anna. I ran a half marathon going from absolutely zero running, hating running, not believing I could ever be someone who ran to running 13.1 miles and completing a half marathon. And low key, I did it in three and a half months. <laughs> this video is going to be all about the half marathon. We're going to walk through my actual race day, which was so exciting. I got some video clips to talk about the experience, but I'm also going to dive into my training plan and I don't know if you can tell I have some like gear back here that we'll get into. So this is kind of meant to be just like a everything that I learned video so that it can help anyone who is like I was in the beginning, having no idea how to even set yourself up for success to attempt to become a runner. So with that, let's start at the end. <laughs> let's do a little race day memory montage. <laughs> My half marathon itself was on August 19th and it was called Area 13.1. So it was alien themed, which was kind of cute. My little cheer team was Zach. So Zach and I loaded up in the car and headed to the starting line. There definitely was a race day buzz going on. Like I felt a lot of excitement. We got there pretty early to make sure we find a place to park and everything. So we were just kind of like chilling in the green area until all of a sudden people started migrating towards the road to head towards the starting line. Now I was not at all trying to be towards the front of the starting line at all because whenever you start, everyone's kind of bunched up on the road itself. And so like, you're not gonna start when the gun goes off. I was probably like two thirds of the way back. Like I felt pretty good about it. In the beginning of the half marathon, I got passed by so many people. Like I cannot explain to you how many people I was getting passed by. And that was something that was kind of hard because it made me feel like, oh, I need to speed up. Even though I was running at the pace that I had trained at and that I knew that I could maintain for a long distance. And so that was something that was really hard was not speeding up and not going too fast right in the beginning. This is the first running race that I've ever run. Like I've never run a 5K, I've never run, you know, a race day type of feel thing. And I feel like my newness kind of showed in like some moments throughout the race, but something that was a little bit funny is that I missed the first aid station. I was like, why is everyone walking to the side of the road? And I'm just like zooming on by and I look to my right and I'm like, oh, that's where they're passing out water. <laughs> Thankfully, and we'll get into it later, I was carrying water of my own. So it's not like it was detrimental or anything, but I did miss the first aid station. With the course that I was on, it was a very flat course, which was awesome but the first stretch of it, we like went out for three miles and then you were to loop around and come back. There was a time when I was still going out that there was a police motorcycle that started coming the opposite direction on the shoulder of the road, kind of doing their little like whoop whoop thing. And I found myself thinking like, get off the road police, we're, you know, we're trying to run here. No, it turns out that he was leading the leading runners on their way back. Like they had done the loop around and were coming back. And so I was probably like a mile and a half in when all of a sudden the leading runners are running the opposite direction by us and oh my gosh they were going fast like there are professionals that run these races I'm like moseying about at my little 1130 pace <laughs> and these guys are going like 523 for the full half marathon so it's kind of funny because that was the only time that I ever saw them because then obviously like they were so far ahead by the time I even reached a three mile turnaround but that was a cool experience in the race it was like seeing the top people sprinting Zach tried to catch me at the three mile turnaround but a lot of the roads were closed like in the neighborhoods around due to the race and so he actually ended up missing me the first seven or so miles I spent like not seeing anyone that I knew I was just kind of like me in the road me in the road my race had enough people that there was always someone nearby there's always several people nearby but it definitely got a lot less crowded as the race went on and people kind of spread out to fit their own paces randomly at five miles well not randomly it was like planned in the route at five miles my race course went into this little like dirt path through the forest all of a sudden and honestly I sprinted that so like all of mile five I wish I knew my splits I don't know my splits but mile five I'm 
I'm sure was so fast because all of a sudden we're like swerving through the forest and I was just having a good time. Like it was a fun like mental switch up there. At seven miles into the race, we ran back through the park where the finish line was. So we headed out, came back, the park was here and then we're gonna do that to come all the way back, you know? But at seven miles, that was there. Some things that were cool about that was that my race had a half marathon, a 10K and a 5K. And whenever we head back to the park, we caught the tail end of the 5K. Well, I guess we, like I'm sure other people caught the beginning of the 5K and all of that. Whenever I was at the park, I caught the tail end of the 5K. So I was like running by racers that were running and finishing up their 5K. And also it was a good like energy boost. Since there's so many people, there was music. It was kind of recharging. Right after I headed back out of the park, Zach saw me. So that was cool to, you know, see someone I know get like cheered on by. It was a good little encouragement. Go get them. Honestly though, miles seven through 10 were the hardest miles of the race for me. I feel like that is a distance where you have already run so far and you still have what feels like so far to run. With how my race, remember we had the out, back, park, the seven through 10 was the next out. So it was like, I'm not even getting closer to the finish line right now. Like I'm running away from the finish line. I hit a big exhaustion wall at the seven to 10, which was really tough. And I also honestly started feeling like really sick to my stomach. There was a few moments where I thought I might throw up and that had never happened to me in any of my long runs during training or anything so 7 through 10 was not a strong point for me didn't love it that's also when it started getting dark because it was a night race that I ran so it's just kind of like weird weird vibes going on right before I reached the 10 mile mark was the only hill in the race at all there was only one hill and I hit it then I feel like that hill honestly kind of energized me again part of that being because in Atlanta if you don't know it's quite hilly it's very hilly so my entire training I have been running lots and lots of hills so they were hard I didn't really love them but also I got used used to it and my half marathon course was so flat except for that one hill I passed so many people on that hill that like egotistically I think it gave me a lot of energy I didn't walk the hill you can walk like you can definitely walk it but I didn't walk through the whole half marathon I didn't walk on the hill and that really kind of boosted me up inside <laughs> and once I hit 10 miles I knew there's only a 5k left it doesn't matter how much I've run up until this point I only have a 5k that I'm running right now it's just me and this 5k we're going 10 miles is also the last turnaround so then I started heading back towards the finish line and it was on a boardwalk that I'd run the 11 miles like the previous video on this channel that beautiful boardwalk is where the last three miles were so it was beautiful it was pitch black but like I, I knew I liked the boardwalk I only had a 5k left and I also was just like very ready to be done <laughs> at that point like those 7 to 10 like the, when the mood was down I was like I am ready to be finished with this and I knew I had some gas left in my tank I absolutely booked it from 10 miles on to 13.1 and by that I mean I was sprinting I struggled to even like sprint for 10 seconds. Granted, this is not like a super fast sprint, but it was like definitely a sprint for where I was at with my energy levels and everything. Never did I ever could have done this like on a long run or in the training when I was doing. This truly is where like race day came into play. Like I said, I don't know my splits, so it's hard to know exactly, but Zach did check my location when I was at 10 miles and I texted him then. And so like looking at the time of that versus the time that I finished, my last 3.1 miles, I was running nine minute mile paces, which for me is fast. Like I steadily training up until that point in the half had been running about 11.30, average 11.30. These last three miles, I don't know what was going on. I was zooming. I was passing people left and right, to be honest with you. And I think the ability to do that really is a testament to the fact that my training, which we'll get into, focused on building endurance, not just hitting distance markers. With one mile left in the run, I could like hear the music from the park. So I was feeling very much like, I'm almost done with this. Get me done with this run. <laughs> Zach was right at 13 miles. So like 0.1 before the finish line. He took this cute video. and I finished. I finished running a half marathon. I didn't have a time goal. My goal was just to finish. I had like kind of a secondary goal of being able to finish without walking, but also like if I had needed to walk during the half, I would have. So I didn't have a time goal, but based on like my training times and everything, my guess was that I was going to finish between two and a half and two hours and 45 minutes. Like that's kind of where I was feeling like I was going to land, but I finished at 2.24, which I feel really proud of. Like I feel proud of finishing, but also it's cool that race day really does give you some like extra 
extra energy that you don't have up until that point. I ended up turning off my running apps, which we'll talk about the running apps that I use and everything, but I ended up turning off my running apps towards the end of the race, like in that last stretch, because honestly, during races, running apps don't track distance very well. I think it has something to do with just like being around so many people and just different things going on, but towards the end, it ended up being 0.75 of a mile off, which is a huge amount to be off whenever it was like cueing me in my ear of how long I had run, so I just ended up turning those off. So I don't know those exact splits throughout the race, which is kind of a bummer because it'd just be interesting to me, but I do know that my later miles were a lot faster than my beginning miles. All of that being said, let's talk about how I trained for this race. Like I mentioned, I was not a runner. I did not run. I sometimes did like inline walk on the treadmill, but that's very different. <laughs> I started from zero in April. And honestly, the motivation to start running mostly came from feeling like I was in a rut with the strength training that I had been doing for years without much change to it. And also I was at this like weird point in life where I was coming out of a job that really put me into a little bit of a depressy. I was coming out of that job. I was unemployed, headed into a new job eventually. And I was just feeling like, well, you know, life was spinning around. And I felt like it would be really good for me to like, have a goal that I was excited about and work towards that goal and accomplish that goal. So that's really where the, itch to run came from at the end of April. I believe April 27th was the first run that I went on ever and it was like a 1340 minute mile something like that and I took lots of walk breaks everything like I'm not kidding when I say I started from zero. I'm gonna make a little graphic of the like training that I followed up until my half marathon so if it's easy to screenshot it or whatever you need to do but before I started running I sat down and researched just a bunch of different plans. There's not really like zero to 13.1 mile plans out there just because that's like a very big jump. So kind of what I did was looked at like couch to 5k plans and then like 10k training plans and then kind of looking from then into like half marathon training plans and kind of just like compiled it all together in a way that would fit for my schedule. So this does not follow like one single website or anything like that, but it is what I use. The very first month up until the 5k, I focused just on getting out and moving for a certain duration of time. Each week has different goals as far as like, okay, run for one minute, walk for two, run for 30 seconds seconds, walk for a minute and a half, whatever it is. Those ones I didn't necessarily follow to a key because honestly, I would just slow down my running to where I wasn't walking. I was still jogging, but it was a slow jog. So I didn't really do like run and walk splits like that. I just tried to like get out and jog for 30 minutes, even if it was like a super, super slow jog. But right from the beginning, I started setting the habit of long run Saturdays, even when those long runs were a mile and a half. It was still like set aside time on Saturday. I was like, okay, I'm running my long run today. <laughs> and it was a mile and a half or two miles, you know, up until that point. After hitting a 5K, that's when it became more mileage goals of getting out during the week and running a certain number of miles. I ran two to three times during the week and had those long runs Saturdays. And by two to three times, I generally mean like some weeks I would run three, some weeks I would run two, kind of depending on how life was going that week. Theoretically, the plan that I followed included two easy runs in a week, which are runs where you do not push pace, you try to keep your heart rate down, you go slow, you just finish it. Two easy runs a week, one tempo run a week, and one long run in a week. If I did three total runs instead of four total runs in a week, it was always the tempo run that I skipped. So I've heard those are good, but I didn't do all too many of them while I was training. I used Nike Run Club's guided runs for lots of the runs that I did, just finding like a distance or the time that fit for me. I really enjoy Nike Run Club's guided runs, and I'll talk more about the apps that I use later when we get to that point. I intended to strength train, like to help myself out, not focus entirely on strength training, but like do some supplementary strength training while I was training for this, and I honestly did not go to the gym once. So so I'll have a little what I wish I did differently section, but also I know that like I did the best that I could with what was going on, you know, but it probably could have helped me. But as far as training plans go, pause and screenshot as needed. <laughs> as you can see, there's like several phases kind of going on here. Like for a while, my runs were, did two two mile runs and one three mile run during the week. And it kind of bumped its way up slowly as we got closer to the half marathon to where eventually I was doing four miles and six miles during the week. So it definitely becomes a bigger time commitment. But then you can also see on long runs, many weeks, increased distance, but I did not increase distance every single week. Some weeks would kind of taper off to be more of a break week. I don't know if this is exact through the whole thing, but for a lot of it, it was increasing distance for three weeks and then taking the step back for a week. So for example, in July, I did a long run of seven miles, the next week a long run of eight miles, the next week a long run of nine miles, and then the next week a long run 
of six miles. So I went back a little bit. I lived for those shorter long runs, especially because when I started, six miles was not short. Six miles was like unattainable whenever I started. So the fact that I would be like relieved of, oh, it's only six miles this week. Like that's wild to think about. But it really did become that where I was even like, oh, it's only a nine mile long run this week. Never would I have ever thought of nine miles as a, oh, it's just that <laughs> before I started. Cause that's a long run, but it's just cool how your body adapts and you can do things that you never could have done before. Let's talk recovery. For long runs on the weekends, I probably didn't do as much recovery as I should have. That's gonna be a theme through this, is that with this training, granted, I had just started running. Like, I'm not an expert by any kind of means. I didn't do too many of the things that are like good for you while you're running, like stretching. I would roll out occasionally. <laughs> I think my recovery from long runs was just like sitting around the rest of the day. Be like, all right, I'm gonna be off my feet now. <laughs> but recovery from the half marathon, I was super, super purposeful about because I did not wanna wake up the next morning feeling like I got run over by a bus. I think I mentioned that my half marathon was a night race. It started at 7 p.m. So I finished at what that would have been like 9.24 p.m. be exact. I did not eat too much after the race. I think I had like two bites of a banana and then I dropped the banana on the ground. So <laughs> did not eat that much. <laughs> and my stomach was just felt messed up in a way that it never had during long runs before. But I did drink a lot. I drank body armors, I drank Gatorades, I drank water and like barely had to pee. So like, I think that shows how <laughs> dehydrated you get during the run. Even though I was drinking during the run too. Right when I got home from the half marathon, I popped my little self in an ice bath and it hurt and I hate ice baths. <laughs> But I sat in the cold water for about 15 minutes and proud of myself for that. I'm really proud of myself for that. There's a lot of benefits of ice bath that I'm sure you could look up and they would tell you more eloquently. But in short, to my knowledge, getting in an ice bath, like basically right after you do a long run or something like that, decreases inflammation. So it kind of just makes you less likely to hurt later. Sat in that for 15 minutes. And then I took my nice warm shower that I had been looking forward to and washed my hair, did the everything shower, all of that. The next day, I honestly didn't feel all too bad, which I was very shocked by. Super surprised surprised by. The only pieces of like pain on me, my muscles were not sore. I did feel tired. Of course I felt tired, but I did feel tired, but my muscles were not sore. The only parts that hurt were my hip hurt, which had never happened before either. So I think it kind of goes to show like you can train, you can get used to running long and still sometimes things happen that never had happened before. My hip hurt, this is totally a guess based on no knowledge. I do kind of wonder if my hip like not popped out of socket, but like something got malaligned because the next day my hip hurt with every single step and it would kind of like click with every single step until randomly Sunday night, my hip like, I was kind of like stretching out a little bit and my hip had this like huge pop that it did and then it was totally fine again and never hurt again. So I don't know what went on with that. <laughs> but thankfully it was better. The other part of me that hurt was that I had some like chafing that had never happened before either. One of the locations was from my vest actually, because I was wearing, and we'll talk more about this later, don't worry, I'll cover everything. I was wearing a long line sports bra and high-waisted biker shorts. I'm actually literally wearing both of them right now, but I'll show you them later. And the vest went down past where the long line sports bra did, and apparently it rubbed the entire run. I say apparently because I never once felt it during the run at all. It wasn't even like, oh, that feels a little weird, but it didn't hurt. No, like I did not notice it at all until I was taking off my vest when I was finished and it had rubbed raw, like a whole little half circle. It looked like a little shark bite. That hurt, that hurt so bad. <laughs> Cause it's like a blister on like the little the soft, vulnerable skin of my side. So that's something that I know to be on the lookout for in possible future long runs. And then I also had some chafing like in my armpit, like over here that again had never happened to me on a long run before. That one I did notice a little bit during the race, but it wasn't at all painful during the race to a point where it like was actually bothering me. But those were my only points of pain. Forgot that I was talking about recovery. Just started talking about my pain and got carried away. <laughs> the day after the half marathon, I did roll out with a little roller. Those are very helpful. They can hurt, but like in a good way, like in a massage type of way where you're like, that is so painful, but I can tell it's really helping me. And you can look on TikTok, on YouTube, online, anything of like roller routines for runners or whatever you want to look at. But just like rolling out like your quads, your hip, your butt, your calf, that can hurt. But I rolled out, I stretched, and also Zach kind of helped a little bit like massage, massage the muscles. He kind of needed to help because I would never like massage myself to a point of pain. <laughs> Whereas he had no problem doing that, <laughs> but I'm sure that it really, really helped. <laughs> but other than the little actual pains that I was talking about, I just felt exhausted and I was kind of like 
waddling around everywhere because my hip hurt, but recovery kind of went okay, which I feel glad about and probably is attributed to that ice bath, unfortunately. What do I wish I had done differently while training so that maybe you don't make the same mistakes as me? My fueling and water schedule during long runs, which I will show you like what I ate and everything, don't worry, worked really well on long runs and I think maybe is the reason I felt sick on the half marathon itself. Now to be totally honest, and I guess this is something else that's kind of like a, what I wish I did differently. The race that I ran was like kind of the only option in the area in the time frame that I was looking to run a race in. So I don't regret picking the half marathon that I did, but it being a night race was really weird. And I don't think I would purposely choose to do a night race again because I was feeling all of these like nervous jitters headed into the half marathon, but it started at 7 p.m. So I just like sat around all day Saturday feeling nervous, feeling ready to go, but waiting until 7 p.m. is a long way to wait. That being said, my stomach got kind of the nervous tummy going on leading up to that day. So that could also affect why I felt like nauseous and sick during the race. My fuel and water schedule that I had been following in every long run was that I would drink sips of water every other mile and then the every other mile of that would take a few of my little chews that I'll show you. So it was every two miles I was drinking, every two miles I was having like half a serving of these little like fruit snacks. It really worked for me on long runs. I felt like it was proactive and like making sure I was getting like the sugars in that I need and all of that. But I kind of wonder if during the half marathon having chews every two miles was just too much in my stomach too frequently. I don't know. But I do kind of wish something had gone differently there because I did just feel really sick between like seven and 10 miles. And that has never happened before. So I didn't really know how to problem solve it. I'm not sure about this one, but I maybe wish that I had pushed harder in the beginning of the half marathon. And why I'm not sure about that one is because with long races, like you do not want to bust out with everything you have right in the beginning because it is such a pacing type of ordeal. And like I said, I was getting past so much in probably the first three miles is when I was getting past. After the first three miles, I did the passing. I don't think there was maybe more than like one or two people that passed me and stayed in front of me. And why I point that out is because my training, I focused so, so hard on pacing and on not going too fast out of the bat and making sure I have the endurance to continue the pace that I was going at. And I think a lot of people don't do that as much and they give it too much in the beginning and then just like fizzle out burnout and are walking by the end. Or they'll do like sprint and then walk breaks, sprint and then walk breaks. And it just kind of like exhausts you. So that being said, I do feel like proud of my pacing and that I didn't have any like miles that I know of that felt significantly slower. However, the fact that I had so much left to give in the last three miles and sped up so much in the last three miles makes me feel like maybe my pace should have been a little bit faster in the beginning so that I could have been like more even instead of just like sprinting <laughs> the last three miles. And then other thing I wish I did differently, this is not a regret because I know that I gave the training all that I could while I was doing it. And I feel very proud of, you know, all that I did, but I did not do strength training during my training. I did not do like mobility, like really focusing on stretches, on hip mobility, all of that. Did not do that. And I really did not stretch really well before or after runs either. And I think I got lucky that that was fine for me because truly like not stretching could lead to injury. Not doing like runner specific strength training could lead to weird form, imbalances between like legs or stuff like that. And not doing like hip mobility and that type of thing also could have affected my form in a way that could have led to injury. So I got lucky, but I do think if I were to do it again, I would be much more purposeful at doing like stretches for runners, having like a very good warm up and cool down routine. Cause even though I got lucky and didn't get like any kind of injury, that's not a guarantee every time. And I should have been a lot smarter about the ancillary things that go with just running instead of just like leaving the house, running, coming back, being done. You know what I mean? But okay, getting on to your questions and kind of the meat of things and more specifics of things and everything, stuff that you asked. Quite a few people asked how long did it take to feel like you were improving or I was improving whenever starting. Cause since I started from zero running at all, like how long did it just feel hard and like nothing was getting better? To give you like an actual legit answer, it probably took me, I would say at least a month. I think probably until I hit four miles as distance, everything just felt hard and like it wasn't getting easier. And I think once I hit four miles, that felt like such a big like milestone to me. And that also was a distance to where, like I feel like if you do something for, it probably took me like 48 minutes. If you are doing some sort of endurance activity, 48 minutes, you can also do that endurance activity for longer. So to give you a real answer, probably about a month. But I entirely relate to the feeling of running and being like, this sucks, this is awful, why am I doing this? And I can also tell you, it's not going to always feel like that. Both physically, the things that I think my body had to get better on when I was running, definitely endurance, like as far as breathing, the lungs, the cardiovascular, that definitely had to get used to improving and that took a while. But once you start getting to those longer, like, okay, I'm running for 45 minutes, I feel like that's kind of the point where it's like your cardiovascular endurance then just like can do it for 
longer. So cardiovascular endurance, I had to get used to that. Physically, I hurt so bad whenever I started running. And there were several factors into that. One was that I started wearing bad socks in the beginning, which I'll talk about whenever I talk about what socks I now like. But so I got awful, awful blisters in the beginning. My feet and ankles hurt so bad in the beginning. I swear they would like swell up after each run. Um, my knees hurt, my hips hurt. And I talked about this in my 11 mile video. There's such a difference between like some pain because your body is getting used to something new and pain from being injured. So if you're actually injured, don't push through that pain, you know, take some rest, do what you need to do to get better. But the pain that I'm talking about that I felt like in my knees and hips and feet and stuff like that was just the fact that I had not been running. And so my body had to get used to being a runner or body. And something that I felt in the beginning was like, oh, if a knee hurts, like I'm done. My run is done. I'm finished. I don't want to feel discomfort. And I think I had to get used to feeling discomfort. I love being comfortable. <laughs> I love being painless and comfortable, but I had to get used to feeling discomfort because it's like, if I have a little twinge in my knee for two steps out of a run, that does not mean my run is done. So I had to get used to that, but everything hurt for, I would say, honestly, maybe a month. Sorry. But whenever your body's trying something new, like it's not going to come in being exactly used to it. And it definitely was very discouraging for me as well whenever that was happening, but it also definitely did get better. So that's an encouragement to you. Something else that I had to improve on was like my mental span duration. In the beginning, whenever I was running for 30 minutes and 30 minutes was my goal, my mind, even if my body was fine doing the running, my mind was just like so bored. It was like, when was this going to be done? How far away am I from being done? I just want to be finished. All of this. That was really hard. <laughs> I could never like zone out in the beginning. I was so hyper-focused on like every single step that I was taking. And I think part of that is just because like that's something new for my brain to do too. So some things that helped mentally were doing the Nike Run Club guided run. They work in a way to where you can still have your music playing and it'll like have moments where the guided run is not talking at all and you're just listening to your music like regular and then it will automatically like turn down your music a little bit and a voice will come in. They may chat for a little bit depending on the run that you're doing of like what they're saying or anything like that. And then they'll be like, okay, I'm going to leave you back to yourself and you know, turn your music back up. So it's mentally stimulating and Coach Bennett is one of the people who does the Nike Run Club runs. I listened to a lot, a lot of his and genuinely like it really, really, really helped me mentally on run, especially because like he is so good at encouragement and somehow like says the right thing when you need it, it seems like. And I'm not one for like things that are cheesy. Like my cheese tolerance is kind of low and some of the encouragement definitely was cheesy and also was very helpful during my run. So mentally that was something I had to get used to too, but it got to the point whenever I'd be doing long runs that were eight miles long, nine miles long, my brain would actually be taking a break, which is not something that my brain does. My brain is always talking. It's always thinking there's always something going on up there and it's exhausting. And those long runs were a time where it was like, I wasn't always even thinking about anything. Like I was just running and like being outside and being by myself and being peaceful. And <laughs> that is incredible. And it took time to get there because my brain was not like that whenever I started running. But it just, after a while, those long runs on Saturdays, I would forward to because it would just be like spending time with myself in a way that felt restful mentally, even though physically was definitely not resting. I feel like that's my experience of like actually starting to enjoy running is whenever it was like, this is so good for me mentally. And I'm definitely someone that before I started running would hear people be like, oh, I love running. And I'd be like, you are lying. <laughs> it is impossible to love running. And I got proven wrong. This is also a very popular question. What shoes did you wear? I will show you the shoes that I wear. Don't worry. Like you will get names and brands and everything that I'm sure you're probably looking for. And also it's going to come with the asterisk of it is so important to get shoes that work for your feet and your gait pattern, depending on how your feet are shaped, how high your arches, low your arches, how you run, like where your feet hit when you hit the ground, everything is going to change what shoes are good for you. One pair of shoes I got just based off of like kind of my own research, not really knowing. And then the second pair of shoes that I got, I got a gait analysis at a running store. This is such a high recommendation from me to go to a running store in your area and get a gait analysis. A lot of them will do gait analysis for free with kind of the stipulation of like, it's kind of expected that you buy the shoes then. So if you're planning on getting running shoes, it can be something that's so important. And what they'll do is they'll put shoes on you, watch you run on a treadmill, make sure your ankle is hitting right, make sure you're hitting like the midsole of your foot right. Like they will make sure that the running shoes are good for you, which is really good because running shoes are different for everybody. I thought that I was a seven to seven and a half and that I had a low arch. Whenever I was doing my own research, that is what I was buying my shoes based off of. I did my gait analysis. Turns out my feet have grown. I'm a full eight. I'm a full eight nowadays. And my arch is not low anymore. They were low really growing up. They were really low, but I did like ballet and I did some like physical therapy various points in my life and I don't have low arches anymore apparently. So I was looking at shoes for, what is it, over pronating whenever your feet turn in and my feet don't actually do that when I run. So. <laughs> 
I was very glad to have gone to the running store and got the gait analysis. That being said, the shoes that I wore, whenever I started, these are the shoes that I got. They're in a vlog of me getting them and they are Hoka Rincon 3. These shoes are, I feel like kind of like bare bones of running shoes. They are not bad at all, but they don't provide like extra cushion, extra stability, that kind of thing. They're like, okay, you put them on your feet and you were good to go to run. These are the shoes that I wore through all of my training runs during the week. Whenever I was hitting distances during the week, I would wear these. And then on the long run weeks that I wasn't gaining distance, I would wear these as well. I don't know if I would necessarily buy them again because I am interested in different kinds of shoes and like seeing what I like the best. And these are the ones that I bought when I didn't really know like what my feet needed and everything, but they are a very good like basic shoe. Also price point wise, these are 120 around there, which is still expensive, but compared to some other running shoes isn't as much as other running shoes. So they don't have like the cushion that Hoka is sometimes known for. They are flatter, but also like they did serve me well. They really did serve me well. I will say that I did get arch insert for these shoes because I thought I needed them because I thought I had low arches. So I have these insoles in there, which are the super feet berry. I don't know if I actually needed them or if I could have just stuck with the inserts that they came in. My arches are something that hurt at the beginning, but also remember everything hurts. So I don't know, but I do run with them still. Like I have the arch insert in there whenever I run. So I don't really know a difference nowadays of if I would actually need it or not, but I did run with it. These are also the shoes that gave me blisters so bad in the beginning. Now it probably is joint guilt between the shoes and the socks that I was wearing at the time, but I have heard from people that running in Hoka's, sometimes you get awful blisters. It's like right here in your foot in the beginning and then they go away. And that is what happened to me too. I had awful, awful, painful blisters <laughs> in the beginning. It genuinely almost stopped me from running because they hurt so bad. Um, And I was also wearing bad socks at the time. So lots of things going in there. Just something to know is that sometimes Hoka's I have heard can give you blisters right here in the beginning and then they get better. Some people that doesn't happen for them at all. So I just want you to know you're not alone if that's the case and they did eventually go away and stopped giving them to me. These are not what I ran with during my half marathon. These are the shoes that I got at the running store with my gait analysis. They are New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. These are what are known as a race day shoe and that is because they have a carbon plate in them. So you can see on the bottom, kind of cool. This is all the like cushion. It has a very high foot stack. Like you are tall when you wear these, very cushiony. And then this, is the carbon plate itself, which is kind of interesting. There's some sort of technology in the carbon plate where it like absorbs the energy when your foot comes down and then kind of like pels you back up. I loved these shoes, to be honest. I still love these shoes. I love them a lot, but it is something that's like with weighted running shoes. You're not necessarily supposed to wear them for like every training run or anything like that. Honestly, because it's like, it doesn't give you that extra bonus then on race day if you're already used to them. And then also the fact that the carbon plate like helps in such a way. Sometimes it can alter your form a little bit if you're only running in them. So I would wear these anytime I was doing a distance longer than what I had done before. So like my seven mile, my eight mile, my nine mile, all of those runs, I was wearing these four. And then the half itself, I was wearing these four too. I love these. I have no complaints about these. The thing that I think I extra love about them is like the top up here. And I don't know if you can see this. The top is not like a normal shoe, sort of. It's almost like you're putting on a sock. Like it is so thin up here, but it like hugs your foot. So it's awesome. I really love it. I have these linked on my um, Amazon storefront. Like I said, get shoes that are good for you. And also I really, really love these shoes even the color and everything. Like I'm very glad to have gotten these. Okay, moving on to the actual gear that I wore next. Like I said, I'm actually wearing them now. So pardon me just a second. A lot of my favorites I got off of Amazon, to be honest with you. And of course they're on my Amazon storefront. Don't you worry. This is what I wore during my half marathon. This is a CRZ Yoga long line sports bra. So you can see it comes down to here. I wear a size small in these and I find that it is the perfect amount where it squeezes me just enough that it is supportive, but not squeezes me so that it is uncomfortable. I'll show you back. Not my tag being out, sorry. This is what the back looks like. Pretty basic. This, I think you can still see it a little bit. That's where my vest had gotten me during the Run. And then these shorts are also CRZ yoga. They are the, I believe the inseam is six inch biker shorts and they have pockets. Of course, also linked in the Amazon storefront, but they are very, very buttery soft. They are long enough to wear my thighs never chafed. Four inch inseam was a little too short for me. Eight inch inseam like kind of got hot because it goes like all the way down to your knee, but I forget if this is five or six inch, but somewhere in that range is kind of like the sweet spot for me. I loved the fact that there was pockets on the side because any run that I wasn't wearing like my vest during, I could put my AirPods in the side, I could put my phone in the side and it was good to go. The socks that I wore, the ones that stopped my blisters from happening, I also got off of Amazon. I got one pack of purple, one pack of pink. I don't remember what they're called, but they're the only socks that are linked in the running section of the 
the Amazon storefront. I don't know the like mechanics behind running socks or what makes them good. There's something about the fabric that makes them good to where they don't give blisters. Toes are a little bit extra cushy, which I didn't have any toenail problems during my little running fan, my little running spurt. And some people do have toenail problems. So I don't know if that's the extra cush that helped me out or what happened there. And then they also go up a little bit on your heel with this little tag guy, which I think prevents blisters back here as well. After I got them, these are the only socks that I ever wore running. I did not change them out for anything else. This is my little bib number. I forgot to show you this. I still have it. But then gear wise, the other thing that I wore on lots of runs and on the half marathon itself is this running vest, also from Amazon. It Nevo Rhino brand. I really liked it and I never had a problem with it until the little chafing incident during the run itself, which also probably could have been fixed if I was wearing like a shirt instead of a sports bra. I'm not sure. I haven't tried to problem solve it since then, but I wore it for two months leading up to the run and never had any problems. The things I like about this, one, there's an extra pocket back here if you need it. I never used the one back here, but you could if you wanted to. This is here where you can put in like a shirt or something like that if you're taking it off and just need it to be held right here. Back here is a water bladder so I can carry my own water. It comes in front like a little spout right here. You just tuck it in, you pull it out when you need it, take some sips. Up front there are five pockets. There's the one back here, there's one right here, and there's also a zipper one over here. I would put fuel in this one back here. I would put my phone in this one up here. I would tuck the little water spout into the back one back here. Nothing usually went in this one but my AirPods I would put in the zippered one. So it had everything that I could ever need. I would put um, hair ties into here as well. Just kind of thinking like, oh, if I were to possibly need something, it could be in my vest. So I really loved this vest. On race day itself too, I did use these little lights. Shield your eyes. Since it had gotten dark, I held them up here until I needed it. But then the one, I don't even know where the other one is to be honest nowadays. But the other one I put on my waistband and that's the one I actually had on because I found that it kind of just like angled it at the ground, which is where I needed the light to be anyways. So this was very helpful to me during my runs. I would wear it on every long run and those shorter runs that were like 98 degrees during the summer because I needed water. My fuel were these Honey Stinger Energy Chews. I got the fruit smoothie flavor and they are just, Fancy fruit snacks, basically. I had a little subscription going on Amazon. It's also on my Amazon storefront. But I would take about three of these every two miles. I never tried anything else during runs, so I don't know if anything else would work better for me, but I always really like these. With that same brand, Honey Stinger Waffle are so delicious and yummy to me. I would not always eat them running related. I just eat them any chance I can get my hands on them. They're also meant to be quick energy, so lots of times I would take one like right before going for a run, maybe like 10 minutes before going for a run, something like that, just for that fun little extra boost before getting going. So questions I got, how did you increase distance so quickly? A lot of it was the fact that I was focusing on the endurance and the easy runs during the week. So honestly, by the time you're running seven miles or so, like you can run eight. It kind of becomes a mental game at that. Now, not to say like increase distance so fast, that, you know, like run six one week and then run nine the next week and never go in between. Every week I never increased more than a mile at a time. And then I did have those every like once a month going back down and not increasing again for that week. Like I discussed earlier. Cause like the difference between seven and 10 is definitely feels like a lot, but the difference between seven and eight and then, okay, I already done eight. The difference between eight and nine doesn't feel like that much. And then getting from nine to 10 doesn't feel like that much. So very much like incrementally climbing while also just going slow. Whenever you go slow, I feel like you kind of hit the groove where it's kind of like you can go forever. Definitely can't actually go forever, but like sometimes kind of feels like that. Running app that I recommend and that I use. So I already had mentioned this one, so I'll show it first. Nike Run Club. I used this not track my runs. Like it would track my runs while I was doing it, but I more so use this for the guided runs. So you can see there's a little guided runs tab and then you can kind of scroll through and pick different ones. So they have like your first run, your next run, your first speed run, your first long run. Like I did all of those in the beginning, but then you can also find ones that are like nine mile long run, 10 mile long run. And I'd be doing those as well. And I already kind of talked about the benefits of their guided runs, but I did love those. To actually track my runs themselves, I used Map My Run, which is by Under Armour. This is what it looks like when you open it. You literally just click start run and it tracks you on the map. It gives you your split times, tracks your distance. You can turn it on. I always had it every mile. It would come in my ear and say like distance, 1.0 miles, time, this time, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then it also prompts you to take a picture after each run, which I think is kind of funny because like, not my cutest pictures ever, but I did take one. Let's go back and find that first picture, shall we? 
Look at all these runs. Here's my very first run that I ever did. Took me a while before I started looking happy in these pictures. But those are the apps that I use. Nike Run Club, Map My Run. Another website, it's not an app, website that was really helpful is called onthegomap.com. And what you can do on that one, this is how I planned my route. You can click to make a route. So it's much easier than Google Maps where you have to like kind of put in an address and be like, how far is it to get there? Oh, I actually want to do this route. This one, it just shows you where you're at. You can start clicking around so you can do a route and it shows you the distance and the elevation of the route that you are creating. So this is how I came up, like whenever I was doing a nine mile long run, I would have no idea how long nine miles was, but I could go on that map and I could start clicking around and be like, okay, cool. If I like head towards the belt line, go on the belt line, up, down, whatever, go on this little road back, go this way, jut out here, do a little loop here. However it was going to be, it would show me the distance. That was very helpful. On the go map.com. What type of stretches do you do before and after run? A little bit touched on this that I was not as good at this as I should have been. My little stretch routine before runs would be, I would usually kind of roll out my ankles whenever I was feeling really good about myself I would do like 10 this way 10 this way and then do the other foot too these are my feet that these are imitating my ankles <laughs> I would try to stretch my quads just like by pulling your foot up to your butt you know I would try to stretch out my inner thighs by doing the one where you put your hands on your knees whenever you're standing up you know kind of stretch around that way I'll try to stretch out my hip flexors just kind of going up and down a little runner's lunge but I was not good at it to be honest with you at all so I don't want to give bad advice but there are lots of like TikToks of running warm-ups stretch routines I have heard that it is a lot better to do like dynamic stretches where you're moving around than it is to do static stretches and I definitely would sometimes just do static stretches so was not the best at that but kind of just like getting your body moving before going for a run so like swinging your legs around doing a little like lunge where you're stretching your hip flexor and then like come back up and then lunge and then come back up is better than just like holding that lunge before a run and the last question was how did you recover from long runs which I kind of already touched on but <laughs> lots of times I would like sometimes roll out for like three minutes and then I'll just like stay off my feet the rest of the day I did a lot better on the half marathon recovery itself than I did on long run recovery so now to the actual last question, the kind of the big one of what comes next. And this is maybe going to be more of a funny story than it should be. It was a huge, huge feat to go from couch zero running to a half marathon. Like that is incredible. And for some reason in my head, whenever I was training for my half marathon, I had told myself that after my half marathon, that was only part way to the goal. And I was going to run a full marathon. I don't remember if I've mentioned this in videos. Like I don't, I can't remember, to be honest, if I had ever talked about this <laughs> to the point where I am actually actually currently registered for a full marathon at the end of October in Nashville. And since we're being honest discussing what comes next, I will not be running that marathon. <laughs> Something that I found was that after running my half marathon, I felt so accomplished with myself. I felt like I had met my goal. I felt like I had done it. I felt so proud of myself. And so it was after my half marathon when I was kind of like, I don't feel the need to run longer than this. Going from that half to full would have been a whole lot of training, likely overtraining, just to be honest, it likely would have been way too much especially for someone who has been running for what, three and a half months? Too much, too much. To the point where even I ran my 13.1 miles. It was awesome. It was incredible. If I were actually still training for that full marathon, I would have had to run 12 miles the next weekend. And I was like, that doesn't seem any fun. Like I just, I just did that. <laughs> and it was this whole event. And I felt so proud of myself. I don't feel the need to go back out on these Atlanta streets and run 12 miles by myself. And 12 miles was going to be the shortest that I was running until that full marathon. It would have been Saturday commitments of running 18 miles, 16 miles, up to 20 miles. And I just did not feel the need. So it did take me like a couple days to fully decide if like I will not be full marathon training but yes I will not be full marathon training <laughs> so then since I'm not doing that what am I actually doing so then I thought well I'm already registered for the marathon that was a dummy move I don't know why I did that I paid my registration fee and everything before I even ran my half marathon so I was like dummy move I don't really want to waste my money with that registration fee it's non-refundable but you can change races that you're running and they also have a half marathon that they're doing that same weekend in Nashville too so then I was like well I'll just run another half marathon I'll just go back in my training program until like the eight weeks left until the half marathon I'll start up there and I'll just prepare to run that half marathon. And I am also not doing that. <laughs> I think part of it just came from like this whole thing was for me to set and accomplish a goal. And like, I did that and I felt so proud of myself. I still feel so proud of myself. And I was like, why would I run a half marathon that I don't actually want to run? It's just cause I don't want to waste that registration fee when like I just did this <laughs> and I just accomplished this. And so this decision took a little bit longer to decide on, but I also will not be running that half marathon. And honestly, I kind of struggled with deciding not to do that because I was like, oh, I'm a failure. 
failure. Like I'm canceling my half marathon as if I didn't just run one. Like I just ran one, I just did it. So there's nothing failure about that, but I'm just eating that registration fee. It's non-refundable, but I will not be going to Nashville that weekend. <laughs> I will not be running that weekend. I honestly just like full disclosure, today is September 2nd. My half marathon was August 19th and I have not run since my half marathon at all. And I am feeling good about it. <laughs> That's not to say that I'm never going to run again. I'm sure that I'm gonna get the itch to get back out there. I thought that I was gonna get the itch to get back out there very soon after my half marathon. And I think that I just feel the sense of finality since I ran it. Again, not to say I'm never gonna do it again. I'm definitely probably gonna do it again. But right now I have no plans to continue running. <laughs> it's going to happen, it's going to happen eventually, but I feel like I accomplished so much physically, I accomplished so much mentally, and I now miss strength training, which is what I was so into for so many years before I switched to running. And I was in such a rut with it, which is why I needed this thing for me to do. And the fact that now I'm excited to get back into it, I really have just like started getting back in the gym, weight training, strength training again, and I feel really good about it. So I have not run since my half marathon. I'm sure I will again, but as of right now, I'm not training for anything. I'm not getting out there. I don't know why I ran through the whole heat of the summer. And then as soon as it starts cooling off, now I feel done, but I do. <laughs> again, I know I've said this so many times already. This is not to say that I will never run again. It's just like right now, I'm still kind of riding the high of the half marathon and the fact that I did it and I accomplished it and I feel so proud of it. And at the same time, I don't feel the need to get back out there and run again at this moment. So that's kind of funny because even when I was originally planning to make this half marathon video, I was like, and then I'm gonna announce at the end that this is just the beginning and now I'm running a full marathon. No, I'm not doing that. And I'm also not gonna run the half even though I don't want to just to like not waste that registration fee. I just won't be doing that either. So I'm gonna become a little strong girly again doing my weight training in the gym. But I hope this video was helpful to you. I think this is the type of video that like I needed when I started. And instead I kind of just like went in not knowing much and figuring things out as I go, which there is benefits of that. And also here is a lot of information that I have learned that hopefully can help you out as you're doing your running journey. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Subscribe before you go so you can see when I do end up start running again. And I'll see you next time.